last time I explained that ground field invariance uh, are defined in some uh, through, uh, through some algebraic cycles, but then one have have to realize in some cohomology theory, and it's a little bit annoying. So, for example, if uh, uh, my variety is over some field k and you include k complex numbers, then one get like Betty homology, Betty homology, which I did, did I don't know something called Betty x, yeah. Uh, See this analytic topology with rational coefficients. So get some finite dimensional uh, 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 rational vector space, but it depends on embedding. And uh, there is uh, mm. Mm. algebraic part of it, which will be one can define like Cho group of x uh, up to cohomological equivalence multiplied by rational numbers and it's the same as image uh, in uh, this cohomology or any other cohomology series. By comparison as morphism we get the same image and the trouble uh, is that this space could be too small. Uh, for example we don't know whether it satisfies Poincare duality. And uh, so Grothendieck uh, designed something called standard conjectures. Uh, uh, essentially uh, saying that uh, uh, you can see the unit component of class of, uh, of diagonal class in in H algebraic of X crosses X is uh, uh, cycles and uh, al also uh, something about left shows decomposition. And, um, uh, and uh, if you believe in Hodge conjectures, these things will be true. And then you get, um, you can def design the semi simple tensor category of motifs. But uh, without assuming can conjecture, uh, many years ago, Ivan Andre found kind of essentially tautological solution of this thing. Again, for the case when characteristic of field is zero, you, you in a sense add by hand missing, uh, missing pieces in, uh, in, in cohomology, uh, missing algebraic classes, and he called this something like motivated cycles. Which is more than algebraic cycles, and uh, uh, in, in this case you get canonical uh, uh, semi-simple abelian category. Semi-simple and tensor category of rational numbers. And uh, if you consider some realization functor like Betty Komolger, you get. Uh, 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 some kind of motivic Galois group, which will be pro-reductive group. Defined over uh, rational numbers. And we checked on, let's on Betty cohomology in Betty realization. Yeah, so group secretly depends on realization. And, uh, uh, and fixed points. Ah, so, sorry, okay, you, you get this group. And mm, uh, this group, uh, uh, actually there are several things one can say about this material Gala group. It maps epimorphically to profinite group, Gala group of Q bar OK. Uh, mm, uh, it will be the action of H0 of, let's say, zero dimensional varieties. In spectrum of finite extensions, and also maps epimorphically to JL1 or JM, its section on H2 of P1, and there is also another JL1 or JM uh, embedded centrally 
in, uh, in uh, endometrium, it's, uh, the torus is responsible for the weight of pure hot structures. And the composition here, it will be kind of multiplication by two in uh, um, raising to second power. Yeah, so get uh, uh, s such a group and then uh, I define a smaller group, I just uh, remove this motivic, it will be kernel of this epimorphism, which is from the state module. Uh, 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 this is slightly smaller group, and uh, it's also axon cohomology. And if you consider invariance, it will be uh, uh, motivated cycles, uh, and it will contain the algebraic part, and it's kind of like better part, satisfying Poincare duality. And for this smaller group, uh, you have. Uh, uh, small thing, you get instead of central gem, you get central uh, Z mod 2, you get central embedding to the G, and still get a uh, map to profinite group. Uh, and what else I can say is that uh, ah, what Hodge theory tells us. Hodge theory tells us there is another action of uh, another GM or GL1 sitting in GC uh, uh, in space in a group of complex point. Uh, namely, if you have lambda, it checks by lambda p minus q on HPQ. If you uh, if you if you get variety. So what is this map GLQ inside this G? Ah, because if you have a representation of this material Gala group, we got something like pure motive, sum of pure motives. And uh, the decomposed on, on pieces corresponding to weights. And these weights will be, will be action of uh, some GL1 sitting in this group. Oh, so there's the GL1. Yeah, GM, or oh, GM, okay. Yeah? The embedded homology with coefficients in Q. In Q, yeah. The powers of 2 pi i, uh, or all the other. That's it, no, it's fine. I, I don't, I consider just cohomology, I don't forget about Durham cohomology, for example. Okay, yeah, so there's no periods for this, periods are not really well defined on these things because you lose 2 pi i. Yeah. No, but when you define as a, co a singular cohomology. Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah, sometimes like people consider like the well restriction from C to R of GL. Yes, yes, I don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is closely related to this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the other one is lambda to the P lambda bar to the Q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have like action of, uh, for usual uh, uh, pure motives, they get action of two C stars and with some real structure because by powers of P and powers of Q. But here if you get, you remember only difference P minus Q. Okay. Yeah, so you get this uh, <coughs> uh, um, uh, little thing, and uh, now if you have x is smooth projective variety, uh, then uh, uh, um, uh, then the theory of Gromov-Witten invariance give a uh, 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 formal. Maximal and log f bundle or some base or some base it defined over rational numbers. So you are taking g invariants in HP dot x. I yes, yes, consider g invariant. Yeah, it will be just algebraic cycles and a little bit more. Uh, should, should advise this motivated cycle story. Formal maximal log f bundle. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, like last time I explained, you get some. Yeah, this is serious. Yeah. And also endowed with action of G. And why action of G? Because all this algebraic, uh, all this conflict invariants are algebraic cycles. Yeah. 
And uh, now one can add, uh, yeah, it's kind of like formal things. Uh, and you can add, consider a bigger field, uh, like to add to rational numbers some dummy variable t, which means nothing, it's just for convenience. Take algebraic closure or completion, yeah, you get a couple of such algebraic closed complete field. And you get, uh, uh, by considering four uh, kind of maps from spectrum of k to this guy, you get uh, not formal things, but uh, uh, analytic. Now, without any log, maximal f bundle over some uh, base, which uh, uh, on, on some base, which is a k analytic supermanifold. Yeah, and uh, central uh, Z2, uh, central involution, Gx by S, uh, minus 1 to the period on the super manifold. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, but what is this map from GL1 to GC? Ah, it's another, it's, it's a space of complex point, because we consider commodity with complex coefficients. Right. You have Hodge decomposition, and consider just grading only by P minus Q. Yeah. You get grading by p minus q, which is preserved by the algebraic cycles, and uh, it gives us this direction. So uh, you uh, okay? So you just go from formal thing to analytic. It's like an open unit. Uh, yes, yes, uh, open punctured unit disk in q directions. Yeah, like and you view it as analytic is in, in the sense of Berkowitz. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, what what we have. We have uh, we have this base, and uh, still group G acts here. We have lo fixed locus, and fixed locus is contained in purely even part, kind of Zimmer tool, which is even part. So we get honest submanifold, not super submanifold, and it's smooth, connected, non-empty. I assume it's access non empty. This guy will also non empty. Uh, even analytic the manifold. And whose dimension is, is exactly uh, the rank of this uh, G invariants. Okay, uh, so you get this. So what goes on? You get some kind of like super manifold. You get kind of like fixed locus, yeah. And group acts uh, kind of non trivially outside. Um, mm, I define a spectral cover. I, I essentially, I can repeat what I said in the first lecture. Spectral cover, which sits on this uh, uh, thing, multiplied by a fine line of my field K. Uh, it will be a divisor and uh, mm, uh, kind of like fiber at any point. And let's take point of this field, not as a point, uh, it will be finite subset, uh, in fact, with multiplicity, uh, uh, it will be spectrum of uh, Euler field. Uh, and the Euler, uh, this Euler operator can act on kind of different spaces. You can act on all co-modal of x, you can uh, take on x on even part, you can act on co-modal of you get smaller and smaller pieces. You can see the space of G invariants, this motivated cycles, or you can act on actual cycles. And spectrum as a set the spectrum is the same as the scheme is different, uh, but as a set uh, is, is the same. Uh, and um, 
Now you can see the spectral cover. And this is because... Uh, because it's commutative rings. Uh, this is a commutative rings, or, or e even s uh, the smaller one, er 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 and acting on some finite dimensional module, and consider elements of this ring, and consider its spectrum. But why the action on the full thing is... Ah, because it's, uh, if you have a non-trivial model of the ring and contains one-dimensional submodule, then the spectrum of the model will be the same spectrum and joint action on the finite dimensional ring. Now, if you have finite dimensional commutative ring, yes. and you get finite dimensional module which contains a uh, uh, free rank, uh, contains a copy of the ring as a module, and consider any element of the ring, mm -hmm. the spectrum of multi action multiplication on the big space. Oh, okay, so yeah. you, you somehow uh, yeah. use the way, okay. Yeah. yeah, so you get the spectral cover, and the main definition, what are so kind of like atoms of X will be a set of irreducible components of the spectral cover. It's a just finite set. Or one can describe in, the, in, the, in a different way. Uh, you have this uh, uh, BXG, and here there are kind of locus of kind of there is certain discriminant so bxj is again uh, something like a poly disk or yeah yes yes okay yeah. in the okay. yes yes and here has some divisor there's a divisor it's a, it's a uh, closed divisor and closed divisor is uh, consists of points where multiplicity of spectrum is less than a generic point. But the number of different, ah, the number of different eigenvalues. Different eigenvalues, yeah. Number of different eigenvalues drops. And the same thing one can describe the following. I would say if you remove this, uh, uh, whatever, projection uh, to, to, to big G, you can see the pre-image of the complement to the, disc to the discriminant. Uh, then you get uh, unramified cover and consider pi zero of this thing. Yeah, okay, so you get some uh, uh, finite set associated to, to a variety. And then uh, kind of final definition, what will be atoms for your field. Yeah, so what I do, I take this joint union of isomorphism classes of um, smooth projective varieties. I can see the atoms x and divide by maybe outmorphism group of this variety, which because natural construction, this outmorphism group x somehow get quotient set and mod out by equivalence relation. Relation generated by uh, uh, three uh, uh, things. Yeah, first, if consider atoms of uh, the joint union, let's say, of two varieties. And uh, that I can identify with atoms of x1 and atoms of x2. Now, why so? Uh, uh, sorry? Yeah. Uh, why, why is this atoms uh, for this joint union split? So you're taking isomorphism class in your smooth? Or smooth projective varieties. Not necessarily connected. Okay. Yeah. So. Now, 
only smooth project you write. Only smooth, yeah, yeah, it's all story about smooth project. Even those with different uh, dimensions of components. Could be different, different dimensions, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, the story is the following. Why atoms of the uh, uh, disjoint union, it, it's uh, 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 union, or, oh, sorry, it's union of atoms, yeah. Disjoint union. Disjoint union goes to disjoint union. Uh, the reason is the following. In mm, mm, uh, when when you have this uh, this maximal F bundle, I told you you have a early reactor field and get also identity vector field for any maximal F bundle. And this identity ve vector field, kind of Euler field to power zero. It, it, it gives a, a uh, it's a gift vector field acting on any uh, acting on any uh, uh, base of uh, of maximal of bundle, and uh, what it does with eigenvalues is just shift eigenvalues. Yeah, so this means that if you consider generic points, this eigenvalues kind of like freely move uh, uh, in, in, uh, in K. And if you have union, they can kind of like freely separate them uh, from one to another. And uh, th that's, um, that's the isomorphism. Yeah, second is this blow up f formula. Bl blow up, uh, identification, namely mm, you take this <coughs> z and x will be uh, of pure codimension r, then produce two varieties, x prime which is will blow up and x double prime is disjoint union. R minus one times, mm. and uh, uh, what what, ex, uh, what explains this is a theorem of Iritania implies that a certain domain here and certain domain here connected to em non-empty domain here and here and ident identified, and then start to identify some uh, uh, pieces of of this cover on in, in some domain. So you start to make some identifications. Um, gives some identification between atoms of uh, of x prime and, at, at atoms of x prime yeah also last time i told you that it's, uh, uh, there was some potential trouble with adic convergence but i checked with the Ritania, everything is completely okay so it's uh, the convergence of the yeah, yeah, no, there was some, uh, in his formulation there was uh, some kind of bad, badly looking uh, rings, some additional variables and some badly looking rings, but at the end of the day it doesn't matter. So it's, yeah, no, it's some technical story, it's related to, to the formulation which I didn't even give to you. Jetty is smooth here, right? Sorry? Jetty is smooth here. Yeah, it's all, sm yeah. all smooth projective, yeah. No, no, jet also. The, the Z, Z, it's also, yeah, smooth projective, yeah. Closed, yeah, subset, yeah, okay. And uh, and then there is a third thing which is convenient to add. You'll see in a in few uh, later way. If you have a vector bundle, of again rank R greater than two, then they can again produce two varieties. X prime will be proctivization of this bundle and x double prime will be a uh, disjoint union of now of r copies. And uh, there is a, a similar result for this uh, mm. story. Okay, and Sorry? But, uh, so one question. But for this story and the application, can we take the field K to be C and G just to be the, the man for the... Yes, yes, it's, it's completely fine, yeah. Okay, but no, 
Yeah. You don't need at this point a final. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to go to the hundred definition, you can take gamma for two group. Yeah. That's to limit, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, what we get? Yeah, but the manifold tail group is not the same as the even the. No, no, it's not the same, but maybe. No, it, yeah, it will be kind of one story. It's universal story which maps to more specific stories if you go to manifold tail group or stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, now if you get variety, then you get kind of class of X will be. Uh, uh, so three bundle is the same now. Sorry? If you keep saying three, I'm sorry, I missed it. In three, it's something different. If you have vector bundle on yes. variety, you uh, get another two varieties, namely productivization and joint union. And have, again, uh, kind of the same. Some, some identification between item of X prime and item of. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, uh, it's another previous result of a return is that this, this uh, like a year ago he proved it, yeah. It's called something like quantum Lerner Hirsch theorem, something like this. Yeah, so it will be uh, uh, kind of finite sums of the sp space of finite linear combination of atoms of K uh, with non negative coefficients. Uh, so you get some kind of like s some numbers multiplied by some atoms. Atoms and numbers are kind of. I just look o on fiber, a generic point, you see. Uh, this f formal linear combination of this guys. And why do you call atoms atoms? I mean, what's the intuition? I mean, why are the, the elements in atoms X? Sorry? Why, why do you call the atoms uh, atoms? As they don't decomp yeah, because if you kind of s uh, stay, uh, it's, uh, it's not generic point, you get a less spectrum, but, uh, this, uh, but this kind of wants to decompose to more elementary pieces. Uh -huh. and eventually, cannot and this. Uh, this. These relations make it, I mean, it's the same kind of relations you see on like whatever the non commutative motive associated to X. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah I, I will go to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, uh, yeah. Yeah, you get. Uh, uh, does, does it, but are you, are you gonna? Is it, do you know if this association factors through? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I will explain in, in, in a minute. Yeah, just it's a whole story. Uh, yeah, just before before going on, I just want to say that the set of atoms of the field it's uh, filtered. Like uh, it has increasing filtration, and uh, these things, uh, what are atoms less than n? It's something which can appear. Atoms which appear appear in the composition of a class of X with dimension X is at most n, and in fact. Uh, I want have, don't have to think about all varieties of dimension n enough to choose uh, one representative in each birational class. So, by the way, if you have a non algebraically closed yes, non field K, do you get the same atoms as for the algebraic closure? No, 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 it's a different notion because you have different notion of invariance and have a different notion of generic point and the spectrum will be, could be different. So the six really depends on the K. And even if you change the embedding in C, it will change, no? Yes, 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 you get a kind of further decomposition. You have more room to deform, get more eigenvalues. If you change the embedding in C? No, it does depend on the embedding in C, it's kind of... Uh, on embedding, you can see that nothing depends. It's kind of purely in this uh, event category. Yeah. It's this way that is not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't depend on It doesn't depend on embedding, you can see, yeah. So if the base field were a complex number to start with. Yeah, but uh, but for interesting complicated. 
No, no, it's also interesting, yeah, but uh, in principle, there's barotional geometry over non algebraic closed fields, so it's uh, that I descent. It's uh, mm, oh, mm, the things. And what's kind of like basic principle? How to apply it to, to barotional geometry? If you have two uh, kind of like barotional equivalent varieties of dimension n, uh, 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 will be connected, non empty, uh, and oh, oh no, of this field K yeah, for any field, yeah. I, I fix my kill field and work uh, always with this field, yeah. Uh, then, uh, then the difference uh, belongs to a uh, finite linear combination of atoms of my field. It belongs to filtration at, at most n minus two. So, but so let me see. So the atoms, yeah. no, the class of X is. Uh, how does it go to the the free abelian group on atoms? Ah, because if you have uh, you consider generic point of this uh, uh, B X G. Okay, then you count with multiplicity. Not multiplicity, yeah. What are, what are connected components? The connected components. So each connected component is counted with multiplicity degree of uh, degree of co covering. Yeah. You 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 represent it's kind of like uh, you remove this discriminant. Yes. You get an unramified cover, maybe not connected, and then each connected component covers certain number of times. Okay, but you have got this uh, this uh, spectral cover, which is. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the spectral cover, you attack it with the reduced structure. With reduced structure, yeah, yeah. Structure. Yeah, we can see the pi zero, can see the reduced, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't depend on this uh, story yeah. there. So, so you just take the the degree in the reduced. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well. Yeah. Okay. So you get the things and why it's so. The reason is because all barotional transformations are comes from blow ups at centers of co-dimension two. And what you see, you get appear new terms which come from co-dimension two or more, yeah, and can appear, disappear. So, if you get barotional equivalence, you get automatically these things. So that comes from this relation. Yes, 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 yes. And and of course the the class of X disjoint union X two X one disjoint is the sum of the classes. Yes, yes, X explained. Ah, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, the joint union goes to sum. Okay, make an add. So again, <laughs> my question about the non-algebraic closed case, is it possible, so of course you have a Galois group action yeah. for the algebra on the single for the algebraic closure. Yeah. So can one describe the situation of a non-algebraically closed K in terms of the Galois action? On no, not, not really. No, because you get kind of a strictly smooth overwrite and get some different number of eigenvalues which are hard to control here. And once again, what is this Bx, how to...? Bx is, uh, ah, no, you have this uh, kind of like formal neighborhood of zero in cohomology and you consider points, it's, it, it, it takes this uh, field which I remove, ah, no, this, I consider kind of like formal pass in cohomology. Uh, okay, because the Galois group appears in G and so it's really yeah. arithmetic, uh, okay. Yeah. So it's all cohomology? All, all cohomology, all cohomology, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So get uh, uh, the things, and uh, uh, again, as was also some kind of like easy fact. Uh, ah, ah. So sorry, just before going on. And for if you consider. Uh, Varieties of dimension n, which are not equivalent. I mean, suppose you consider things that are independent module or previous varieties of previous. Well, in the motif. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Do you get different atoms? No, 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 no. no. For example, for rational, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There are many things. For example, consider like flag varieties. Is, uh, it will be sum of points, and number of points will be total dimension of cohomology. If consider like projective space or flag variety, yes. then then it's in, in, this in, uh, symbol of X will be sum of 
dimension of convolution multiplied by class of a point. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, uh, and also there is kind of uh, important fact, if canonical class of X is NF, numerically effective, uh, then, uh, then this class of X is just one atom, which I denote by at atom depending on X, with multiplicity one. Uh, there is no splitting of eigenvalues, and the reason is the following. This earlier operator at um, point gamma, which belongs roughly to H0 plus H2, like roughly of my space, acts on, acts on commodity of X, uh, preserving, fil preserving filtration Uh, it, it can only increase the degree in cohomology. <laughs> and consider part which preserves the degree of cohomology on associated graded uh, you get multiplication by identity multiplied by constant and constant will be coefficients of 1 and h0 in my class gamma by unit axiom yeah, so get kind of uh, if uh, 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 if it's zero, you get an important operation class is zero. Otherwise, you get shift by constant. So you'll get just only one again values, and this uh, thing follows from the dimension of uh, uh, virtual dimension model space of curves, uh, because first chain class plays a role. Yeah, yeah. So you get such things, and now uh, what will be invariance of atoms? Kind of the, the most naive invariant will be isomorphism class of a non non zero representation of group my group and because I extend my field uh, unfortunately have to change scalars to the larger field uh, of finite dimensional representation or maybe super representation uh, where mi um, minus one uh, x by parity. As before, and um, uh, and such that representation of V alpha uh, uh, and such that V alpha admits a structure. That's uh, I, I change scalars from Q. I don't know how to do. extend scalars from Q to this bigger field. Uh, uh, such it admits a, a structure. It's kind of super uh, of a uh, uh, unital commutative associative superalgebra. And uh, I, I explain what is uh, why it's so because uh, we have atoms then in the neighborhood of generic point we get pr decomposition of my. Uh, uh, F bundle in the product, and then on all tangent spaces we get structure at any point of this uh, commutative associative algebra. And uh, why it's kind of the same everywhere? If you get concrete variety, then this huge group acts through some finite dimensional quotient. It will be not pro reductive group, but through some actual finite dimensional reductive group. It has kind of like countably many different representations, and definitely they stay the same in each connected component. So uh, admits, but the, the, the structure is not. Uh, it's not given. Yeah, the structure is varying with the point. Yeah. Okay, and and the group uh, respects. A group respect yeah, and g g g invariant. In particular, you see that this representation always has a trivial uh, sub-representation because you have unit in the algebra, so it's not a reducible representation at all. Uh, and you on, on the other side, you, you take the standard cohomology or the or, or the primitive cohomology? I mean, wh when you have these whole structures. No, no, no. I, I forget about this primitive. Uh, it, play, it plays no role for me. Yeah. But but then the Manfortet group, if you don't put the polarization, is not reductive. No, 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 no. No, I can see the polarizable hot structures. Okay. For polarizable, it's reductive. Yeah. 
So commutative means graded commutative, I take it, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, super, yeah. Mm. And, uh, yeah, and then one can draw some consequences. That's already on this very rough level. Oops, I don't know. It's a super representation, but isn't it, was the superstructure recovered by the central Z? Yes, 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 exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but commutative algebra in super sense, yeah, so you should, should remember it. So it's anti, it is just Z more two graded. Z more two graded, yeah. And now uh, one can immediately get some corollary. Suppose we have two Calabia varieties. Operational equivalent and Calabi Yao of certain dimension n. Uh, then, uh, uh, then cohomology of x1 is isomorphic cohomology of x2 is g. Okay, formally I have to make this extension module. Yeah, but in fact one can. Forget about this thing here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yes, yes. Okay. Let's let me tell you what's going on. Uh, in fact, uh, mm, uh, uh, kind of many years ago, the following idea of Butterf, I proposed something called Mativic integration, and which implies this cohomology or things equivalent, even in stronger sense. As uh, G Mativic modules with together with weights. Uh, and the proof was kind of like magic proofs uh, using this Mativic integration, there's no identification uh, between two spaces. Uh, then, about maybe five years. Mm -hmm. So, this identification is what? Like isomorphism of the GQ modules? It's isomorphism of GQ modules, yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, 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 maybe I'll first say the story and then give the proof of this uh, result. And then about five years ago, uh, Mark MacLean, uh, when case embedded complex numbers, produced a completely different proof using another proof using some s symplectic topology, uh, very involved actually proof. And here I have still another proof of, uh, of kind of a bit different nature and uh, uh, let me explain the proof. Uh, uh, yeah, so we get, uh, if you have Borosian equivalent, uh, first I get this x1 minus x2, yeah, it's different of two atoms because each guy has just one atom, so we have to prove uh, uh, I, I claim uh, uh, these atoms cannot come in codimension, cannot come from codimension two. So you are giving a proof of this isomorphism. Sorry. So you are giving a proof that this, those two are isomorphic IGQ models. Yes, yes, yeah. I claim it's actually it's zero. Eventually, it's zero. Uh, uh, there is the following. It's, these things cannot come from uh, from uh, uh, this. Both atoms cannot come from varieties of codimension uh, dimension uh, n minus two or less. And the reason is the following: because you have to like h n zero of x one or x two is one, and this in p minus q decomposition get difference p minus q equal to one to equal to n. Part is non-trivial. And because for smaller dimensional varieties you have, uh, you cannot have difference p minus q will be at most, at most n minus two. They cannot come from dimension two. On other sides, it's Baryshnikov equivalent. It's some linear combination of things. So it means that these guys are equal to this six is equal to zero. 
And then it means if you use this invariant, you see that this representation is the same. Yeah, so it's relation between GQ and what you said, G-motivic? Ah, G-motivic, it's slightly more. It's, uh, it's keep tracks of weights. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, uh, kind of maybe in the second par uh, part of the lecture, I've explained how one can even uh, recover these things with some extra work as well. So I didn't understand the uh, you uh, why. So you 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 have different. Uh, what is alpha x one and alpha x two? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I claim that uh, these things, if, if a variation equivalent, should be linear combination of atoms of a chemical variety called dimension 2. But it's impossible. So it means, but it's... Uh, no, no, but I didn't understand w why... Uh, because if you make blow-ups and blow-downs, you... By this blow-up conjecture, you add things coming from center, which is called, have called dimension 2 or more. Uh, but why they cannot? I, do, I don't understand the lo the. You have to use the Calabria, that is the dimension of H, that, and also the triviality of the canonical class. Yes, yes. So how do you use it? Ah, we use it because uh, uh, it means that for my for my um, uh, atoms, when I get this representation, then in kind of like Hodge the, uh, Hodge part uh, hot grading by only by p minus q, I have a non-trivial part with p minus q equal to n. I have h and 0 in my variety. Yeah, but you consider... Yeah, you get C star acting on, on commodity of x with complex coefficients on hpq, it acts with weight p minus q. And uh, uh, there so, will so be property of this representation that in Hodge realization you get p minus q component is equal to and p, p minus q component is p minus q equal to n. And uh, this cannot appear from n minus two dimensional varieties and appears for these atoms because it's the whole commodity of x, one commodity of x2 here. But when you take the difference, this thing goes away. So how? Ah, so it means so it means that it should coincide. So it means that atoms coincide, because uh, it's li it's uh, in its free abelian group. It's either generation of the six not coming from a dimension two or should come from dimension two, so it should vanish. So you said that the atoms correspond to isomorphism classes of non-zero representation. Uh, for, to atoms correspond to non isomorphism class of representation. Yeah. Okay. And the way to X is written as a union. Ah, fact, if x is, if kx is nef, then the class of x... It's exactly all commodity of x, yeah. Is the, the one, uh, one single atom. Yes, yes. And representation is representation commodity. And why is this? Because... Uh, uh, ah, because it's, it's completely obvious. It's, if you take sum of atoms, uh, this all my local systems is... Like tangent space was split in a direct sum of... In the composition theory of some sub-varieties. Uh, then tangent space to maximal bundle was all cohomology of my variety and only one atom. Why, why there is only one atom if kx is net? Uh, because multiplication action of earlier rector field by algebraic cl classes increase degree in cohomology. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, uh, because uh, you get uh, apparatus only one eigenvalue at any point. Only one eigenvalue? Yeah, because uh, you get a, a kind of diagonal term will be coefficients of H0, some number, and the rest will be strictly upper triangle in the... the Why? Thing. Where do I use the Kx is nephew here? You, uh, you saying that the separator preserves this filtration. It's come from cal calculation of dimensions of modulus space of curves and going back to definition of ground between invariants. Ah, okay. So this this is the part where... Yeah, yes. And in the Calabria house case, we know that Kx is an F, so because it is zero. Yeah. And then you have this. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, then you get this... 
But so you use only that H zero of k x is, is is yeah one can uh, yeah it's one can make so, uh, my, well, one can make uh, two weaker properties it's canonical class on non negatives and gamma of x one k x one it's a Baruchian invariant it's not trivial you can you can make it slightly more general result which I don't know how to deduce using Mativic integration <laughs> yeah so it's really shows that it's a uh, kind of different idea. Are there some examples uh, uh, of these atoms in uh, mm -hmm. uh, points for G mod B? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I will eventually go to examples. Yeah, there are stupid examples coming from a variety of general type or color yeah? But usually you start, like, projector space, you get decomposed to points. Can you give the result of this statement, like from the 90s, I think, that about the use of motivic integration to prove... Uh, yeah, to prove this guy, yeah. What is the reference? I think, I think Lazare wrote it. Denef and Lazare wrote some... I gave a talk, but I never wrote anything, and Lazare put it in written. There was also maybe Burwaki seminar by Layanha wrote it. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so get this uh, application kind of in any dimension. And uh, if you want to prove that varieties are not rational, if them x is greater than 1, uh, uh, greater than 2, then if x is rational, So, x is still trivial? No, 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 it's a general statement. It's for, okay. for any sm uh, smooth project, connected smooth projective variety. Mm, then x is rational imp implies that class of x belongs to linear combination of atoms uh, of, of de degree at most n minus 2. Uh, because projective space actually linear combination of, of points, as I explained to you. Wait, sorry, Maxim, the, you, there's no hypothesis. Do you need the dimensions of these global sections of the canonical bundle to be the same for x1 and x2? No, if I have it's, it's, it's the oh, same. Ah, yes, thank you. Yes, if it's yes, aberrational, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you get this criterion of rationality, or no, better non-rationality. And uh, I, I just briefly remind you, like from my first lecture. Yeah, uh, yes, but you use the fact that for projective space you get a sum of points. points. It, was one of, it was one of calculations of, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the projective bundle thing, when you wrote P of... You can put project bundle over point. Yeah, you take a project, but the projective bundle thing is for the projective completion of a vector bundle. Yes, yes, yeah. This means it's not the general P of E. You don't have it for general P of E, the space of lines or hyperplanes. I don't know if you're... To you. so, 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 no, no, this is a projectivization of vector bundle. Ah, okay. And for this you have a formula, but not yes. for a, a more general project. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's another story. I will maybe return to this um, third le uh, last lecture. What going from? Yeah, so there's some story. I, I just want to uh, say, say some little word. Uh, I, I kind of repeat from my first lecture, uh, it was application to this very concrete case. If X is a uh, generic cubic fourfold in P5, so degree degree is 3 and dimension is 4, uh, then it's not rational. And how one prove it? Uh, uh, yeah, one can uh, calculate this, uh, this quantum multiplication, some specific point, <coughs> and um, uh, essentially, like zero, p you don't put any corrections, like, like zero point, more or less, of, of, of your commodity space. And then uh, uh, one get a kind of, uh, uh, when you get spectrum of Euler operator, you get zero and maybe some uh, cubic roots, uh, three roots of one. 
at roots at all uh, 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 roots of one you get uh, atom corresponding to a point but what happens in zero it's pr uh, it's uh, mm, pretty funny space it will be some will be 24 dimensional cohomology space and if you consider p minus q decomposition you you said that the the spectrum of the Euler depend on the point is in general you say it's it is so, so the spectrum uh, the, the ah spectrum it's some specific point uh, on this base yeah can, like given tile calculators uh, uh, quantum multiplication yes. and then one can see that you get four eigenvalues yes. you get zero and up to some multiple three cubic roots of one Oh, the cubic roots of one. Yeah, yeah. It's a very typical picture. You get zero and roots of one. Yeah. This is for, for zero or for a generic point? Uh, no, it's, it's point zero. It's not generic point. So there are exactly four... Four eigenvalues, yeah. Four eigenvalues. generic for point, how many you get? I don't know. But it does matter. It's, uh, I think it's again four. Uh, but what happens? You, you get representation. You got maybe not atomic representation because maybe it's still not very generic point. But uh, so you get here some representation. V, and, uh, and so to get 24 dimensional representation and dimension of fixed log of rank of fixed thing, uh, it's exactly for this generic six will be two. It will be only two algebraic classes in, in this story. Um, uh, that uh, yeah, bec because cohomology of this hypersurface is decomposed something coming from projective space and primitive cohomology and the assumed primitive cohomology is no algebraic classes. And what given tell calculate part of primitive uh, on algebraic classes are only two and which and which algebraic ah you mean the yeah in primitive cohomology in principle one can accidentally gain some algebraic classes and this is generic means I exclude this uh, situation N generic means it's no no motivated cycle say no but v corresponds to to yeah. to. Yeah. V is what? The, v is the cohomology? No. Sorry? V corresponds to... V is some piece of cohomology of X. <coughs> so V is not the whole cohomology No, X. no, all cohomology of X will get X to three algebraic classes. So it will be 27 dimensional. Yeah, but... Okay. Uh, so it will be... Numbers of dimen dimensions of will be the following. Of dimension of the representations okay. will be like this. I see. So 124. 1, 1, yeah, it's all roots of 1 will be. 1, 24, and, okay, 3, 1, and 1, 24. Yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's some kind of very specific calculation, yeah. Yeah, so I get the situation, uh, and I claim that's already shows that the things cannot be rational. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, in principle, I don't know uh, whether it's, uh, because there are two algebraic classes, there is still possibility that if you uh, deform, uh, it can split further, further uh, to some smaller things. It can split further, but maybe y prime uh, split. But still, uh, what we get for the things we get uh, uh, dimension of v prime and p minus q equal to two part it will be at least one uh, because you can uh, or, or you can. Um, uh, keep the part with this uh, h to zero class survive, and uh, and rank of uh, and rank of fixed uh, locus will be at most two, and uh, then it gives uh, then the things cannot come come from uh, varieties of dimension at most two, from points curves. It's clear because from points of curves you cannot have this uh, p minus q equal to number at all. So it can come only for surfaces. But for surfaces we need not all surfaces up to birational uh, isomorphism. There's good birational classification. There's some mm, uh, various types, something like, uh, you know, some 12 uh, different types of surfaces. And you have surfaces with, when you have this uh, section of canonical bundle, triple section of canonical bundle, could be either K3 surface, abelian variety, or surface of general type but surface of general type will have maybe some ADE singularities in minimal model then we can resolve this ADE singularities get smooth surfaces and for all the surfaces so all surfaces with uh, gamma 
with h to 0 non equal to 0, have birational models for which a uh, uh, canonical class is non negative. After blowing up this ID singularity, you get uh, not, uh, not a general type surface, but uh, slightly borderline surface, but canonical class is negative. And then it implies the track of invariance is at most at least three. Yeah, so you get this kind of tiny contradiction. So you get two, and here you get three. And why it's three? Because you get surface, you get class in H0, cl uh, like uh, some ample class, and class in H4. So you get at least three different algebraic classes. Yeah, so it's some kind of... Um, you mean, uh, in the cell you have H0? Ah, you, because you have H0, H4, and the polarization in H2? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like. Uh, so that will prove that the generic. Yes, it's proof. Yeah, and yeah, and then uh, one can try to play the same game uh, with some other varieties, uh, and uh, I think it could be interesting for non algebraic closed fields and maybe for three dimensional manifolds, four dimensional manifolds. Uh, it's dangerous to go to high dimension because we don't really know classification of varieties in uh, version classification high. If, uh, yeah, eventually, like, like maybe in three dimensions, close to completion, so we can use this information, go to five dimensional. Yeah, but it's uh, not mathematic, which I like. Yeah, so it's one can, it's uh, really using many. Uh, uh, so you will need to do Kodamian sign two. Yeah, yeah. If, if you know kind of complete understanding of all Gromov invariants for all things of, of course, up to convention two, is it can grow some con con conclusions. Yeah, yeah. But it's a uh, very unpleasant direction, which some people like. I do. I do. What did you use exactly so from the classification? <laughs> Sorry. Ah, generic because uh, uh, in this. Otherwise, if it's not generic, it could be three. So you also use the previous remark that if kx is nef, then yeah. then you have uh, uh, yeah, it's only one atom, yeah, yeah. one atom. Yeah, you use the structure of yeah. yeah, general type surfaces that you re there is a minimal model yeah. which is yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, singularities, and then you resolve it, you get yeah, yeah, you get again one check because it's ad singularity. Then you get you get. Calbanner is the pullback of the one from downstairs. Yeah, it will it will be nef. It, it will be still nef. Yeah, it, because it's ample downstairs, it will be nef upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, uh, just maybe before we finish. Uh, uh, now I just want something which what, uh, Dustin was asking about motivic measures. Uh, there was uh, something, some another story in this motivic integration. Uh, there, there was uh, I used something called K zero varieties of, of my field K, which can describe in uh, two ways. You can see the constructible sets up to cut and paste. If x contains uh, z, you say that x is equal to z plus like x minus z. Yeah, consider a na naive kind of constructible uh, cut and paste uh, group generated by constructible sets. And then there's a uh, theorem by Bittner that this thing has kind of really nice representation by generators and relations. It's uh, it's kind of z module generated by um, uh, maybe symbols. Uh, I put kind of like m m. It will be motivic measure for, for these things by classes when x is smooth projective variety, and you mod out by two relations. Yeah, kind of like if you take disjoint union, it will be sum. And one relation and second relation is the following. It's actually very similar to what we have here. If you get, uh, again, uh, uh, 
some, some, some variety another variety, you consider class of blow up and remove exceptional divisor. Exceptional divisor, which uh, lies over the things, exceptional divisor is actually productivization of normal bundle. So if you remove exceptional divisor, uh, is kind of set theoretically gets the same as x minus z. Okay, so this uses resolution of singularities. Using, yeah, Vladarchik, yeah, it's all, yeah, story, yeah. And characteristic zero. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, so you get just two relations. This and this. M M, uh, motivic measure. Okay, oh, I just to, not to distinguish with my symbol, which has no 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 uh, no M M. Yeah, yeah. And then Im you immediately see from this uh, relations, we almost uh, uh, if you combine the things, we get uh, we get a map from K zero variety to additive group generated by atoms of my field K by X M M goes to X. Yeah, this uh, Bittner relations will be satisfied. Uh, good. Uh, and, but in fact, here you see that uh, 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 this thing actually is a ring. It's a ring, uh, you can just multiply, you consider x1 mm plus x2 mm will be, if uh, multiply, it's a product. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's automatically a ring, but uh, as the model, it's kind of horrible. People found some torsion, yeah, so it's, uh, and this thing is much, uh, much nicer, it's, at least as the model has no torsion, and the claim, uh, so the thing actually goes to some quotient. And you're more by relations that class of uh, P1 is equal to twice the class of P uh, point. Or in terms of affine space, you say a fine line is equal to point. Yeah, so modeled by some ideal. It's, so it's again a ring. It's a quotient ring. Twice, uh, twice a point, yeah. Ah, so this is like modding out by L minus one. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Quotient ring, yeah, and also, uh, and this quotient ring actually goes to uh, something else. One consider a, a group generated by uh, uh, isomorphism classes of. Uh, I, I'll spoke it later about smooth proper categories, DG categories, modeled by relations coming from semi orthogonal decompositions. And uh, conjecture is will, will be mapped here from here to here, but uh, but it's fr from uh, from atoms you can get a category. That I'll explain on the last lecture. This atom actually gives a class of isomorphism class of category, but it's uh, mm, purely hypothetical. Uh, and uh, just what I want to say, uh, it's a ring. In fact, here's this uh, product structure. This structure is structure constants are non-negative integers. Uh, it's again by pure thought. I don't know what, what, is, what is going on here. No, what is going on? You take two varieties, yeah? And take product of the uh, things where we decompose the eigenvalues. It's some part uh, it can be embedded uh, to this guy. And there is some notion of tensor product for this maximal of bundles. Very, very funny. You kind of take two uh, maximal of bundles, you make some tensor product, will be something of uh, dimensions, will be product of dimensions. Yeah, so it's pretty non-trivial procedure, but, but in, 
uh, one can kind of go to some. Um, uh, uh, when you get splitting on this part, you get um, uh, some kind of generic eigenvalues. We get eigenvalues at some special points. Then move a little bit further on, and the six will decompose further. I mean, this is like some corresponding to some trivial Kunis components or something. I mean, yeah, you take you take like independently some uh, uh, the cohomology of X across the unit. In yes, yes, you consider uh, you consider uh, kind of class uh, cohomology classes kind of split coming from here times identity plus identity frame to here. Then this operator failure product will be tensor product of operators, yeah. and um, and then. Uh, uh, because you have tensor product operators, you get product of sets, and the product of sets will be embedded to spectrum here. But then you move a little bit further on, and things start, start to split further on. So you get some kind of like funny non-negative structure constants by pure sort. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe I'll now make a little break for five minutes. Yeah. Um, maybe I'd, uh, just finish uh, just uh, two little remark. Uh, there is things which I should mention, but I, uh, before uh, there is some uh, story about duality if just for f bundles. If we have f bundle, some H with some meromorphic connection or some base multiplied by spectrum or some field, whatever, in some variable u. Uh, uh, then one can speak about uh, things with, with self-duality when you had a pairing between, so you get this things, you consider dual bundle and you identify uh, with uh, the same things coming from antipodal involution in U variable. Uh, and such that the pairing will be symmetric and uh, non-degenerate. So it's equivalent to, this means it's non-degenerate. Uh, one can um, uh, speak about symmetric pairings. And, um, and what uh, really, what, what follows from the story? Mm. If you get uh, uh, this, uh, structure, if you have on, uh, when I consider decomposition theorem, have this duality, it's, uh, it's persist on, on, uh, uh, on um, factors in decomposition theory. So it means that on all, on all atoms, you get the structure because it's, it's yeah, this structure uh, 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 natural for gromo witten invariants. Just use Poincare pairing, and uh, and hence that means that on atoms we also have pairing, have pairings, and in particular, uh, when we get this representation of uh, isomorphism class. So what about preservation of the uh, irreducible component under this. Uh, Ah, yeah, yeah. No, if you have F bundle with, with the pairing, uh, then it, it, maybe at some point, uh, whatever, it splits locally in the product of uh, F bundles of smaller bases. Yeah. They all also have inherited the, the pairing as well. They automatically inherit non degenerate pairing. Each. Yeah, you, yeah you, you have your kind of a bundle near point, it's decomposed in the product of some. Uh, if bundles of smaller base, and they also inherit the pairing. Mm, yeah, uh, uh, so it means that if you have the alpha representations of G, whatever this K, Q, 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 K representation, uh, it has this uh, symmetry of Hodge, uh, you get symmetry of, of I'll, I'll say kind of like Hodge spectrum. Uh, there was, I, I recall, there was a group sitting in GC, uh, acting by uh, mm, P minus Q on HPQ, 
And then this numbers p minus q, uh, uh, the hot spectrum will be this numbers. It will be symmetric with respect to zero. around zero. So the hot mm, you have this hot spectrum. And in fact, um, this peric is another tool to deal with the things and this story with cubic for fault. Uh, original proof uh, which I, uh, for non-rationality, I use a parity of pairing instead of this uh, other stuff here. So there are different tools here. One can use pairing uh, as well. And uh, uh, there are Again, this is another kind of unrelated remark. Uh, Gal group of Q bar over Q acts on the space of atoms for any field. Uh, preserving product, preserving multiplication. Yeah, because uh, what really goes with uh, with atoms, we can see the eigenvalues and can see like mm, like points with rational coefficients. You, you essentially, solve equations, algebraic equations, with rational coefficients, and there will be some Galois action. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any example which is non-trivial, but it's something which exists for free. Now, if I get the base change to this uh, field. Yes, yes, but it doesn't really matter because yeah, it's, it, it, one can analyze it. It's, I, I really don't go to the details. And maybe some uh, last remark, it looks like an like abstract story. We don't can do any calculation, but we can try to think about it and make conclusions. And for example, one can do some develop um, a very easy theory. If we get singular variety, like singular, like normal, and uh, what usually people do for, can do resolution singularity, Variety and it contains some singular part. Uh, then one can do the following: one consider all possible blow-ups resolutions. So get some x prime maps to x, which will be proper map, and x prime will be smooth, and it will one to one over x minus singularity. You consider all possible resolution of singularities. And now what you do? Uh, uh, you do the following in this situation. You consider Grom of Witten invariance of x prime using only curves x minus x and uh, minus x. Uh, my, what did you write? x? One to one over x minus singular locus on the on smooth part. I saw more freedom over that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a resolution, resolution singularity. Yeah, what's it's called? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you consider only curves, such that projection of curve is a point. It's an only vertical curve. It's kind of closed uh, world. It also gives maximum left bundle. And now consider point of uh, consider uh, uh, generic point of uh, B x prime with this modification uh, uh, invariant under this my group G represented by algebraic classes and such that coefficients of uh, kind of like class and cohomology of identity element and h0 is is zero. Yeah, I deform only by class of degree two or more. Then the theorem is that uh, what you have uh, sitting over eigenvalue zero doesn't depend on resolution singularity. And so to get some kind of like contribution of eigenvalue zero, Eigenvalue zero of Euler vector field is universal, kind of doesn't depend on resolution singularity, and it's kind of an interesting object. Uh, so you get some some um, something with Poincaré duality. It looks like intersection homology, and some classes coincide with intersection homology, but it uh, depends, and uh, some um, and it will be kind of like common part of all homology of all resolution of singularities, and. Uh, 
intersection cohomology, it's only no, there's no, prod no product structure. You get quantum product, <laughs> but it uh, depends on uh, point on the Frobenius manifold. You don't have product structure, you don't even get the grading. Okay. Yeah. But, but still, you get uh, um, something with point graduality. Okay. And, and here, X is projective? Yeah, yeah. I, it's another uh, kind of worms. Uh, here, one can do things not projective, one, one can define. Uh, this quantum multiplication for these things will be well defined, so you don't need. It could be open variety; it doesn't matter. So it actually be some shift theoretic object, um, but I will not go to it. Yeah. So it's. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so now I'll just try to briefly. So if you wrote about a very funny theory of weights. Uh, yeah. ah, oh, 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 maybe st st still uh, uh, a little remark. Another potential invariant of atoms. Which is the following. Mm. I recall what what was the atom? You, you get this all B X, and there is fixed locus, yeah. There is a fixed locus, and we uh, make this product decomposition, and we have atom. For, for atom, you get the following: you get a, a germ of analytic germ of of maximal F bundle. End out with over certain space, depending on atom, some kind of like uh, maybe super manifold, depending on and end out with uh, with G action and germ at point belonging to fixed locus. And now for and, and now you, you get something very specific uh, uh, for this atom uh, on this fixed locus. The error field will get eigen, only one eigenvalue everywhere. Yes, only one eigenvalue on the alpha g, and the things are defined up to analytic continuation. What do I mean by analytic continuation? You have two, two analytic germs. You imagine there is a big, uh, some larger analytic F bundle with uh, with connected fixed locus, and you, you consider germs at one point and another point. Like in complex analysis, you can make up to analytic condition. Yeah, so it looks a um, pretty unaccessible notion. <coughs> but what, what here goes on? I have some algebraistic conjecture that it's not so wild uh, thing. Uh, namely, let's consider such Uh, such guys, and now um, mm, wh what we do? We consider for some large integer n. We consider n germs. So you consider germ at some other point, not not zero, but the germ of uh, a germ at at a point of fixed locus. Okay, but and then you can move it just along the fixed locus. Yeah, connect a point of fixed locus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, what you consider? You consider n jets of uh, this maximum of bundles instead of uh, at, at points over a truncated form power series ring of this uh, G equivalent F bundle, and, and you consider n jets at points belonging to this uh, B, uh, B alpha G up to a uh, diffeomorphism invariant, uh, because it's, you don't have canonical coordinates here, uh, diffeomorphism and gauge transformations. So you get some finite dimensional variety, consider the set, 
and consider the risky closure. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a uh, uh, so you get some finite dimensional tick family in some algebraic stack. You take the risky closure. You log the feomorphism and the because bundles, it's a, it's a base and, the bu and uh, it's some germ manifold. You have kind of considered form dimorphism of the base, commuting with J action, and uh, also to, uh, different trivialization of your vector bundle. On, on Risky closure in what again? Sorry. Ah, I consider space of all possible n jets, uh, kind of like describe finitely many Taylor coefficients of the story. I consider things and consider dimension. The conjecture is bounded by constant independent on n. Yeah, so, uh, so there are kind of like differential equations and what you uh, end at, uh, uh, at the end of the day, you get some maybe finite dimensional algebraic variety with some algebraic foliation and we move along leaves of algebraic foliation. So the, the end jet of a particular J equivalent? Oh, no, no, if you consider, if you consider this, uh, this for, for each atom, you just move point, you consider, choose some kind of local coordinates at, some po at any point, and consider Taylor coefficients to realize bundles somehow, and consider Taylor coefficients up to order n. Single f bundle and you look at it at different points? At different points and different realizations, yeah, okay, yeah. And then you take this, so starting from a given bundle, okay. Yeah, for given analytic guy, one can give this kind of finite jets and claim that satisfies some differential equation. Uh, mm, which a kind of mirror symmetry seems to indicate this is the case. Uh, at least one can analyze for Calabria varieties what is going on and get actual some finite dimensional uh, varieties. But, but since the risky closure will have a lot of irreducible components, right? Sorry? Since the risky closure will have various irreducible components. No, no, only one. Because, because it's connected uh, analytic variety. It's, ah, okay. it's only one. It's only one connected component here. So the Jeske closure is stabilizing, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it is one irreducible component. Yeah, one irreducible component, yeah. Yeah, so it's something which you can in principle calculate and distinguish two atoms to see that the risky closures are the same or not the same. So to, but it's kind of purely theoretical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Now it in says the following. It, yeah, uh, it does about oh this maximum of bundles where they come from. Yeah, I just said this ground feature invariance, blah blah blah. But uh, there is kind of like universal source source of f bundles and the maximum of bundles. You start some uh, a very general story. You start with a smooth, proper, uh, zeta graded DG category of, of my field. <coughs> and, and here, what does it mean? It means that this category should be perfect complexus of some DG, uh, uh, zeta, uh, again, uh, uh, it will be Z2-graded DG algebra. And uh, this no notion of smooth and proper uh, uh, means that A is a perfect bimodule. And, and proper means that A is a has finite dimensional cohomology of, of my field. Yeah, so this uh, well, no well known notion. And maybe I'll just go to some kind of basic example for such k 
category. Suppose you get smooth algebraic variety of my field K. Now here maybe characteristic is zero. And you get a map from X to A1, for Y to A1. Now sorry, you said that it should be A by module. Yes, by module is, is has a uh, direct sum of finite extension of copies of A cross A, A opposite. Yeah, yeah. It's some, uh, I, I will not go to this. In finite dimensional cohomology, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Smooth. yeah, it's smooth. This, this guy, it's, it was a translation. Uh, uh, if you consider category of perfect complexes on schemes of, uh, let's say, separated schemes, they, they can be written as perfect modes of some modules and this exactly correspond to properties of schemes. Uh, in for uh, you mean proper schemes or general? Uh, no, for uh, proper correspond to proper, smooth correspond to smooth. Yeah. And where is this the construction of the DG algebra correspond to a scheme? So yeah, it's kind of like Bondel van der Berg theorem. Yeah, one can uh, I can do it. Yeah, it's some explicit way. Mm, yeah, yeah. But what examples for the such guys? Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of like smooth proper al algebraic varieties. Yeah, uh, but just a little bit more. You ca can add potential here. You can see the function says so that critical locus is proper, and f restricted to critical locus. Okay. Sorry. Critical locus proper over. Okay. Yeah. And f restricted critical locus is zero, maybe with some multiplicities. It's set theoretically. You have only one critical value, which is zero. Variety itself could be not not compact. You need. To, uh, and f is no, proper. It can't be compact. Sorry. Right? The function f is proper. No. Uh, critical locus is proper. Yeah. Um, then uh, you get a category uh, which uh, can be described in a different way. It will be Z2 graded category, and people prove that it's smooth and proper. Do you allow f to be identically zero? Yes, allow. I can allow, yeah. Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a category which has two descriptions. Uh, I, I will be very brief. It's, uh, uh, is there is something called matrix factorizations. Uh, roughly, it's very rough, it's not very precise things. You consider like two vector bundles on uh, uh, EI, uh, like vector bundles on X, on Y, and I get two maps. So the delta square is equal to identity multiplied by F. And such thing form some DG category. Or equivalent description, if F is not identity equal to zero, you can describe as something which is called matrix factoriza uh, uh, singularity category. It's called db sync. Xf. Uh, so it's you can see the category of perfect db of coherent shifts on the fiber as a subscheme, and modeled by full subcategory of perfect complexes. And it turns out to be too periodic. Things and people proved that it's uh, belong to this class. Yeah, so get this. Uh, so it's include usual algebraic geometry when f is equal to zero. Db you write db sub. Oh, sorry. Why? Yeah. Db sub what? Sing. Db db sync of this uh, critical locus. Ah, okay, so that's. Yeah, that's a quotient of category of. Ah, and people prove that this is equivalent to this, to something in this. Perfect complexes so over some A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, but you assume that has just one critical point. One critical value. Yeah, value. yeah. Value. critical value is one. Uh, usually you have more, so. Yeah, the story is the following. Then this, this, no, this first definition, no, here I just kept zero, and here I get this. If I add, add constant to a function, uh, for example, will critical value not zero, then both categories will be trivial. But why in the second case you get triangulated category, but in the first two period A, ah, where the shift by two is... Yes, 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 one can treat it. In the first it. case, you can say that you shift by interchanging... No, no, you don't shift. You consider, uh, then you consider two guys, you consider our homes in obvious way, and there will be 
it will be z to graded complex uh, and it has some I don't understand the answer. So, so usually you have functions which have critical more than one critical value. No, here I see that critical value is zero only. So you don't know what to do in that case. Is no, no, if it's not zero, you, for each critical value can shift function can by hand define some category, but it's not zero, but have two critical values. Mm, I don't no, I don't want to consider this. You don't want, but you yeah. Uh, now, in this case, one for each critical value, shift function by constant, so zero became critical values, and define for each critical value, you can define a category. Th they don't speak with each to each other at all. Yeah, and then uh, in this situation, you get the following. Uh, just for general category, you get various homologies here. You get Hochschild homology. Which is... Uh, kind of derived product in a bimodus from A to itself. Then you get a negative cyclic, hom negative cyclic homology, Hc minus. Yeah, so it will be vector space over K. Negative cyclic will be uh, something over series in one variable. And you get periodic cyclic homology. It's over Laurent series in view. It's a just basic locomotive algebra. And in this example, what are this homology will be? <coughs> Hochschild homology will be a uh, hyper homology of y with coefficients and shift of forms with differential multiplication by df. And uh, negative cyclic homology will be hyper homology of y shift of forms. Now take. Uh, series in u and consider the f plus u times dif the ram differential and periodic cyclic homology you get the same but you took Laurent series yeah okay you get this uh, uh, three So the indices you have hyper cohomology and you talk about Hochschild homology. How's the Hochschild homology? Yeah, it's like homology. Yeah, it's algebra because dual to variety. No, no, no. Uh, this is isomer. In this example, it's Hochschild homology of algebra. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. So grading cycle. You say that grading cycle part. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, is it is z to graded spaces? Oh, z two. Uh, I consider, yeah, the whole thing is only Z2 graded. Yeah, and then uh, one have always inequality that dimension of Hochschild homology over K is greater than equal than dimension of over periodic cyclic homology over uh, this thing by some spectral sequences. And. So dimension means the total dimension? Total, total dimension, yeah. Yeah. That will be typically in three dimensional. Yeah, actually this thing is uh, this thing is finite dimensional. It follows from this smooth and proper property. It implies this is because it's perfect module, then it algebra is finite dimensional, get automatically finite dimensional thing here. Yeah, so it's uh, so things are in this case are really finite dimensional. Uh, and uh, so one can make various conjectures uh, that dimensions are the same. It's called degeneration of Hodge to Durham, and it holds for things coming from algebraic variety. It also holds in this example, in this geometric example. Uh, and mm, in general, uh, it's open. Uh, so people prove it for z graded algebra. For, for z two graded algebra, its proof doesn't work. So it's uh, mm, mm. Uh, one can make this con conjecture, and 
<coughs> then what follows from this story? Already from this conjecture, uh, 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 I claim that you get F bundle over point. Uh, namely, uh, in this case, this implies that negative cyclic homology is free module of finite rank. It's actually super module, so super, uh, because uh, even in our part. So you get super vector bundle. And uh, the claim it has canonical connection, which has second order pole. Uh, I don't really have a proof that this has second order pole. Mm. Where this comes from, this uh, second order, uh, where this uh, story comes from, it in general we have not just one algebra but consider like family of algebras, then we get something called getzler gautzmann in connection. And in this Z2 graded case, you get canonical deformation. You, uh, for example, for this. Yes, the Gauss, you said that you consider. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's. it's uh, um, if you get family of, of uh, DG algebras, yes. then you get something called Gessler Gauss Mannion connection. It will be connection on periodic cyclic homology along parameter space, but not in U direction. Uh, a long parameter space. Yes, yes. And where comes connection in U direction? The claim in, in Z2 graded case, there is a natural action of this kind of uh, GL1 or GM on space of algebras. You, for example, multiply both differential and multiplication by constant. Uh, uh, like differential and multiplication multiply by, multiply by constant. So you get for which algebra get kind of like one parameter family, it's actually correspond to... Wait, wait, sorry, which differential? Here you have... In algebra. No. Oh. Uh, algebra, I didn't say what is algebra. In the, uh, in the examples, correspond to your scale function. Start to rescale functions, for example. Uh, yeah, so every, uh, every such object has this canonical one parameter def deformation, which actually uh, uh, equivalent to rescaling variable u. So you automatically get the connection variable u, so you get some mysterious connection in, in this uh, variable u. And if you, if you get family of algebras over some base, then you get automatically uh, F bundle. Sorry, one second. You multiply differential in the you d d differential graded algebra A, and what do you do with multiplication? Oh, both differential and multiplication multiply by the same constant. But you don't get multiplication. Sorry? No, you ch no, no, in general, if you have A infinity algebra, there is a higher A product. Okay. You multiply uh, equations are homogeneous for A infinity algebra, so just rescale or multiplication, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you get this family of algebra, you get, uh, you get F bundles. And, uh, but it's not maximal F bundles, and uh, the story is the following. If uh, algebra is Calabi algebra, even on odd, and uh, uh, you have degeneration and conjecture one, then something remarkable happens, then you get maximal of bundle. So uh, what do you mean by Calabi Yala algebra? It's a bit long story, uh, but it essentially maybe one need very little, maybe one need the fact that it's, uh, this dual to the subject A is A shifted as by model is A shifted by some even an odd number. Something like this. I think maybe a, a kind of like a, is, is by module because it's perfect one can make you can do more it's equal to A uh, sh shifted by even an odd number. Uh, just uh, I think this very weak property is sufficient. And then if you have conjecture one, then this implies the following things. This, mm. 
you can see the cohomological Hochschild comp complex as by module. Uh, if it is by module, because it's perfect to make a dual by module over opposite ring, which is the same, you interchange pieces, and then you say that it will be I I isomorphic to A in some unspecified way. Uh, then it implies the following. Derived sense, you take the dual. And dual, yeah, and, yeah, you make a resolution, yeah, in derived sense, yeah, sure. Equal to A again in this category. Of by modules, yeah. Of, and the dual. It's again a bimodule. Yes, yes, yeah. The dual as a bimodule of some bimodule is... A perfect bimodule is perfect bimodule. Ah, you take our home. Yeah, our home, yeah. Yeah, you take our home from mm, A to A cross A, o opposite in A in A in A. Okay, and then use the, the A tensor of A opposite. Yeah, it's, op it's opposite is equal to it. There's like a Gorenstein in some sense, Gorenstein. Yeah, it's, 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 no, it's like Calabria variety with volume element. It's, so it's equal to A, then what did you write in bracket? What did you write in bracket? Er home from A to A times A opposite. Equal to A and then in bracket. Was so you shift or? even or odd? Yeah, yeah, shift, it will be up, up to shift. Calabria could be even and odd, yeah. And here you are doing Z more two graded. Z more two graded, yeah, it's all makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah in, in dramatic situation, uh, Calabria means that X, uh, uh, Calabria uh, uh, implies that X, Y has volume element. Holomorphic uh, algebraic volume element. Okay, and uh, what I want to say, you, you get, you get this, uh, 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 yeah, if you have um, algebra, you get something like called cohomological Hochschild complex. It's some DG Lie algebra responsible for deformations. And when you have the generation of Hochschild Durham and Calabria property, one can show that this guy is uh, homologically abelian. So it's as DG Lie algebra is a morphology algebra with zero differential. And dimensional Hochschild homology is equal to dimensional homology. And so you get kind of like Maur Cartan space uh, of this DG Lie algebra. It will be formal germ of a uh, supermanifold, finite dimensional supermanifold. And over this germ, we get maximal F bundle. So like the solution of Maurer-Cartan Maur equations is DG Lie algebra. Omega equal to omega. Yes, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 half of gamma This is. It's represented by f by some uh, s uh, algebra s form power series in several variables, even in not variables. It will get some functor on art and rings. Uh, and we, why, what proves the smoothness? Because it's. It follows from the generation of Hodge to the Raman and Calabria properties, yeah. So, so this <coughs> algebra, I mean, what do you mean by Maru Kartan? Does it have a connection? No, it's you it's, have DG Lie algebra, you can, you can try to solve equation like this, up to gauge transformation, close to zero. Yeah. So Calabria <coughs> means this, this duality thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Calabria. Yeah, yeah. And then you get maximal of bundle and also with pairing. As this uh, on Hochschild Kamal, you get pairing and plus pairing. Yeah, so that's uh, a very general class of origin of this maximum of bundle. So it comes from uh, such story. Yeah, I explain you one dramatic uh, situation here. This uh, Hochschild cohomology will be this algebra. Uh, namely, you can have some model consider like in over complex numbers, you can see the sections of y. Uh, kind of in infinity sense, you can see the uh, d bar forms multiplied by poly vector fields. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, what, uh, what is this uh, model space in dramatic case? Okay. And get, uh, let's assume my uh, variety is over complex numbers. 
Now consider sections of uh, uh, infinite sense of consider d bar forms multiplied by polyvector fields in holomorphic direction. By the way, you, you, here you write collab. No, no, it's. CCAA -C -C is the. Uh, yeah, it's a cohomological Hochschild complex. Ah, co form A. Yeah. Form A. This is up to quasi isomorphism? Up to quasi isomorphic, yeah. As DGL algebra is isomorphic to this guy. Which is kind of very concrete object. Yeah. Well, okay, so here it's an analytical description. Analytic description, yeah. Different dimensional guys, like so, text infinity forms of type. Uh, only in the bar direction, with values in polyvector fields only in holomorphic direction. No, so it's just R gamma of polyvector. It's R gamma of polyvector fields, yeah, but here on, here on this complex we get literally uh, bracket and differential. Differential. By graded or. or Z2 graded. Are you take P, the same P in both sides? No, 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 different. That's what my question was. It's all different. So, so those are two different. Yeah, arbitrary, yeah. Okay. Yeah, eventually at some point will be equal, yeah, but... Uh, is the least structure? Uh, you get, uh, you get scotland bracket here, cup product here, and differential, it's uh, d bar differential here, and commutator with function. Yes. Yeah, maybe I'll go... Uh, not now, but why it's maximal bracket width? Sorry, why it's maximal bound? Ah, because the dimension of the base is equal to rank of the fiber. Yeah. The Hochschild homology and homology have the same uh, size. Yeah, yeah. So you see that uh, this come from this variety with this function, it's called Landau Ginzburg model. And now, what are Gromov Witten invariants? Uh, there is uh, there's this notion of Foucault category, whatever it is. And this is the deformation of Foucault category. Uh, and um, yes, again, strictly speaking, uh, there are some uh, technical questions. We don't really know that uh, this category, Foucault categories, uh, kind of correspond to smooth proper things, but it behaves like this, and in many cases proven. But uh, so, where do you use the dimension? Uh, the, what? Ah, because the, the dimension of the base will be the dimension of Hochschild cohomology. Uh, Hochschild cohomology is something like X in category of B-modules to itself. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. Okay. And this has, and here get tensor product. Yes. And uh, th 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 they have the same dimension because of uh, the scalabio property. And this is used to know that you have an F band R. Ah. You get maximal of bundle, yeah. So wait, sorry, but your claim about the relation with Foucault categories, was it if you have a smooth projective variety? Then it should have something like Foucault category, and then the formation theory of this Foucault category gives you this F bundle which comes from Gromovit ah. invariance. Yeah. I see, so you, can, so you plug in C to be the Foucault category. Foucault category, yes, exactly. Yeah. This F bundle is the same as the other one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, the story is very mysterious. Uh, for example, uh, 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 one of questions, suppose have variety defined over number field, you can embed in complex numbers in two different ways, yeah? You get kind of the same gromov witten invariance, yeah? Because it depends on the break closure. But Foucault categories has nothing to do with each other. Yeah, so it's really uh, interesting story. You get completely two different categories with the same deformation, ki kind of the same deformation theory. And another mm, kind of uh, question, this gromov witten events are defined also for variety of, of a positive characteristic, you only need uh, cohomology series with zero characteristic. And then I, I have really no idea what could be Foucault category for variety positive, you cannot embed in complex numbers at all. What is Foucault category for complex variety uh, where, when you take symplectic form? Well, I took some ample class and I take, yeah, I take simp usual symplectic manifold. Yeah. Yeah, so you get maybe just uh, still about maybe 10 15 minutes. A little. Is the degeneration conjecture known for these Foucault categories? No. Now it's known, uh, uh, this conjecture is known for Foucault categories for Fano varieties. 
And it's uh, used, uh, it's actually used uh, uh, algebraic result by Petrov and uh, Vologodsky and Ventrop, yeah. It's not really symplectic proof. It is known for? Uh, when, when you get fun of variety, uh, then people proved, uh, and maybe with some uh, uh, section of anticanonical bundle which is smooth, then people proved, uh, Zeidel and Permiliana recently proved uh, uh, this degeneration result for Foucault category. Yeah, but now I want to add some conjecture too, uh, to the same kind of general story, even without this color Biao for smooth proper, proper A, whatever, yeah, okay, uh, and characteristic A is equal to zero. The conjecture is that actually there are two parts. First part is, if you consider periodic cyclic homology with this connection, which I describe you kind of only informally, it has regular singularity. So it means that, uh, so it means that HP, <coughs> uh, HP is kind of like K, K module extends to K of U model, so that connection has, has poles of order one. It's not the extension of H negative, which uh, is some other extension, has poles of order one. And part B, assuming K, eigenvalue of eigenvalues of coefficients at u minus one of this connection uh, for this extension belong to our rational numbers. Yeah, that's uh, algebraically say what is unipotent, quasi unipotent monodromy. Again, it, it was proven for Foucault category in um, for this fun variety. Uh, I, uh, yeah, so one can, I actually I believe it's true for any DG category, but it's uh, again very open thing. And then? This connection has pole of order at most one. Yeah, yeah, but it's another extension. And then the claim in this situation, one gets certain spectrum. So in usually you say smooth and proper, so in many cases you have z-graded. Uh, uh yeah, z-graded are fixed points of the uh, Euler field, yeah, kind of, yeah. Okay, but 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 you can treat it for so for algebraic varieties you get z-graded. Yes, yes, for algebraic varieties it's yeah for algebraic varieties actually this uh, you automatically here get regular singularity you get integer numbers for free if it's z-graded category, it's really uh, automatic. Uh, if you have z-graded, you, you know A and B? A and B are known, yeah. Okay, okay for z-graded, yeah. And and the case of of the, of of y with a function is is z-graded or z mod? No, it's z mod two graded, yeah. But it, then it is not. It is also known. Or? Yeah, it's it's also true. It's also true, and I want to say uh, something about the second values. And one can define certain spectrum, uh, which belongs kind of like Q, maybe Q, and with multiplicities, and responsible for even and odd pattern cohomology. Uh, namely, what you do? Uh, it's it's really based on the things with regular singularity. So w w what we have? We have a bundle, yeah, and with some connection with regular singularity. Get fiber equal to zero. Uh, what I want to say, if you have bundled this connection and set it uh, with regular singularity, uh, I consider the spirit exactly homology, it's a vector space uh, with connection over a over Lorentz series. With regular singularity, this assumes that this, uh, you get this rational numbers. Then from the six, you can produce immediately a, a Q value evaluation. on periodic cyclic homology. It's a vector space of finite dimensional on a Laurent series. And I claim this connection with regular singularity gives you valuation. 
and let's we explain you uh, informally how it goes. Mm. Let's uh, 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 let's imagine that my uh, field is complex numbers, and because of regular sorry evaluation on the vector space on the vector finite dimensional vector space, yeah, yeah it's like a norm relative to the yeah uh, yeah how 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 it looks like um, I have uh, uh, what I do here uh, I have a, a bundle of formal disk with formal puncture disk with regular singularity, yeah? Suppose I have complex numbers, I can extend to actual disk, just to simplify life. I get bundle on the actual disk, and now choose a ray. And along a ray, consider a flat section along the ray. And uh, now uh, I can expand my uh, uh, section, actual section in, in basis of this flat sections. And when, expe uh, when expecting basis of flat sections, I get uh, uh, some uh, series with coefficients, maybe if it's this variable again u, I consider things and divide by log u, I get uh, sections coming some piezo series, in particular they grow like some power of u. Uh, and uh, so automatically for each section I get kind of like maximal mm, maximal uh, order of growth and gives me some valuation by, in by rational numbers because I have quasi unipotent monodromy. I completely ignore this log u part. Mm -hmm. So you can just take algebraically the operator u d over du and the uh, yeah, yes, yeah. values of this uh, in yes, the yes, completion yes, yes. and then do the same thing. Yes, yes, yeah. One can do it completely algebraically, yeah. yeah but just, just one. Yeah, so it gets, you get valuation or kind of norm. But extension of bundle of HP to H negative over this extension gives another valuation. I, I, if you have a section, consider what, what is order of pole. It will be Z valued valuation. So what goes on, you have uh, kind of one uh, finite dimensional vector space with two valuations, two norms. And there is a notion of like in complex, uh, like over complex numbers, you have two, two emission norms, then you get singular values. You can simultaneously di di diagonalize and you get some spectrum uh, which is b belongs to rational numbers. Okay, so you have a basis which is orthogonal for all both. Yeah, what can, yeah, what can, yeah. Yes, true for non comedian case, yeah, the same. F if you have two norms, yeah. there, there is some kind of uh, uh, singular values or logarithm of singular values. And you get certain mm, spectrum rational numbers. Yeah. Mm. And is this, uh, so it will be the certain spectrum associated to the story. Uh, uh, what I want to say? This spectrum is symmetric. So uh, uh, you can ask what I compare with what you have uh, uh, single values, uh, one or first one with respect to second one or second with respect to first one. You, at the end of the day, you get the same spectrum because my bundles in this situation have duality and f f for dual, get opposite numbers. So it's, uh, you get symmetric spectrum. And this symmetric spectrum, it's really very interesting. Okay. Yeah, so it will be kind of another invariant of, uh, of, uh, of atoms, what you get, what spectrum you get at generic point. Uh, so right now, uh, so next time I will continue to talk about the spectrum and uh, uh, Ah, because if considered a generic point of this BXG, yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, so, so in fact it's modeled to six. A generic point of BXG, uh, you get this eigen only one eigenvalue, you can see the locus when eigenvalue is zero, so it's correspond to like one critical value function zero. Then, then what can happen? It could be regular singularity or irregular. If it's irregular, it will be kind of new beast, 
it will be invariant cut labeled. It's irregular syncretic, we don't know what to do. But if it's regular, then we get the spectrum. At generic point, you get some bunch of numbers. And what do these numbers are? It's, it's, it's this really very funny uh, numbers. Uh, uh, so what goes on, for consider complete intersection. Yeah, one can analyze uh, this, uh, this quantum invariance and so on. Complete intersection of degrees d1, dk in projective space. And assume it's uh, You consider uh, Fano, it means that d1 plus dk is there's an n, yeah. Suppose it's Fana, then the picture is the following. Mm, uh, it looks uh, 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 like this. You get something like n minus n plus 1 minus uh, you get a bunch of mm, you calculate some point and believe it kind of will be a generic point. You get some roots of one of this order, you get kind of like one dimensional spaces, and you get kind of like huge, uh, big uh, piece of cohomology corresponding to zero eigenvalue. Uh, and there will be some piece of cohomology, kind of, uh, kind of central part, uh, piece of cohomology of my variety. And it, it will be can is the following. You consider cohomology of this, this hyper mm, this complete intersection. This cohomology will be some of uh, restrictions of cohomology of projective space, like one class in each degree, and direct sum with primitive cohomology in the middle degree, which generically will be completely transcendental. And uh, this guy correspond to zero, but this some part of this guy also co correspond to zero. And what will be this spectrum? It will be non-trivial spectr spectrum acting on this guys. And spectrum looks will, will be the following uh, gadget. You start with numbers 1 over di, d minus 1 over di. It takes a union with multiplicities. You get collection of in Q, kind of with multiplicities of some numbers. Now I apply the following transformation. Lambda goes to uh, n plus 1 minus sum of di. Lambda minus dimension of x over 2. You get some other numbers called lambda and you order them. When you order, you see that's kind of really funny things. It's kind of like... Below the disjoint union. Sorry? Sign, below the disjoint union sign on the right. It's it's kind of, uh, it's all rational numbers. And now I apply, uh, just each number you rep replace by some linear, uh, apply a fine function in one variable. So you get these numbers, you order them, and now you do the following. Or maybe you order like L L0, L L1, like this. You order, or, order them. So it means that all this arithmetic progression uh, kind of inter interlace, you get some, some order, nice uh, order. And now you uh, start to split them. So now these numbers will be strictly increasing. You start to... So lambda 2 plus... 2, 2, yeah. Two. You, you order these guys yeah. and add index in the order, yeah. Yeah. No, we get rational numbers. Rational numbers. We get rational numbers and this will be spectrum. Wait, you order, so you have two sequences of numbers. Where you put yeah. tildes? No, tilde, no, you, have to, you, you, you apply these things, you get lambda tilde, yeah? And then do two tildes from there. Yeah, from, uh, from two tildes, I just start to separate them. Then this, this guy will be 
uh, rational numbers, and there's some kind of interesting rational numbers. I don't know if you take uh, like uh, cubic, three-dimensional cubic, you get something like five over six and plus minus five over six, and these things will be uh, this uh, this. Uh, uh, is going to be this one yeah, a spectrum will be these numbers, yeah. Yeah, so... so there is no multiplicity. And no multiplicity. And what together... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, which numbers? So you have one sequence... You have oh, lam lambda, it will be the spectrum. The spectrum in the sense of... Uh, sorry? It was this connection, yeah. With multiplicities? With multiplicity. Ah, no, but after you uh, do it, it will be without multiplicities. Before, before they only they, c they can coincide, but after you enumerate them and, and index, they will no longer coincide. And the spectrum, this means that the the, the sp but the spectrum is is has possible multiplicities. The comparing the two norms has possible multiplicities. Yes, no. Uh, if compared to norms, it will be spectrum without multiplicities in this case. Ah, okay. Yeah, on algebraic part, and what goes on? It's kind of really funny picture. You, you mm. maybe I just now for this uh, central part, like big big part, one can introduce uh, now like actual Hodge numbers. Here will be something like p minus q over two, and here will, it will be central, <laughs> like zero, and here will be p plus q over two, roughly. Uh, this will be spectrum which uh, here it will be action of of c star sitting in my Galois group c responsible for p minus q direction. And what I get here, I here I get integer numbers, integer or half integer numbers, maybe divide by two. Um, it will be transcendental cohomology of the piece. And here I get some kind of like strange rational numbers uh, corresponding to part of algebraic story. Yeah, so, so you get Hodge diagram, but, but with rational numbers on uh, one direction integer or half integer in another direction. Uh, and what is nice here, if you look for this, uh, for this uh, intersection, I look many, many examples. What goes on, you get, uh, uh, it will be like algebraic part of your variety and it will be transcendental part. Yeah, it's some part of uh, algebraic cl class which do not uh, separate for the story. And what is going on here? We get like largest number here. You start to draw a diamond inside uh, uh, by 45 degrees. It contains this uh, point coming from uh, 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 transcendental cycles on X. And they should stay kind of like integer or half integer uh, arithmetic uh, numbers, and they stay as as much as possible uh, to fit this to, to fit this uh, um, uh, diamond. Uh, yeah, so you get things like look like like sort of dimension of your original variety, and and that really fits almost to the, the to the very end. Yeah, so uh, my guess th this this numbers also semi continuous and gives this abstraction to rationality and uh, uh, yeah I, I told this if uh, yeah we, we, ch we check in uh, examples it's really kind of f fits very well and if it's bigger than dimension minus two then you should get non-rationality result uh, for all varieties but but it's um, okay now I, I think I'll stop and continue more systematically about the spectra and dimensions next time here yeah. So, so once again, you have two sequences, uh, uh, pan over di. Ah, and a spectrum is spectrum is uh, of in, in uh, for these two norms is this lambda double tilde.
you just... So you use the first one, you simply don't use? Yeah, it, it's kind of like you start with uh, something very simple, just ma ma make a little bit rescalic and then uh, make this uh, r uh, r kind of... Make six. Ah, just maybe one little, uh, one little remark before I, I go on. If, if you have variety with canonical class equal to zero, uh, then this uh, uh, spectrum coming for two norms, yeah, it's exactly uh, 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 filtration by dimension, by degree in cohomology. Yeah, so it's, it's you get get usual weight filtration. Uh, this follows from very one can analyze these connections, make some conjugation, and uh, conclude it uh, just almost immediately again for the upper triangle part and uh, reasons and yeah 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 and that's that's uh, complete the proof for this result for b two Calabiaus uh, Baruch and Calabiaus have isomorphic cohomology not only as usual uh, as usual material Gala group not the smaller uh, non commutative part which I used. So it proves the result of yeah it's it's another proof of this old result. Uh, when I, uh, <laughs> Where you really need the Calabria <coughs> or yeah, not yeah. The, the weaker thing. Yeah, here it's a bit weaker thing, yeah. Yeah, here it's a bit more general, yeah. It could be canonical class non-negative and uh, KX, it has at least one section. And so okay, we slightly more general. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I think it's... So if we take, let's say, modular space of <laughs> <and> other <laughs> models... Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, maybe... Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. 